Hello, wonderful person. This is Anton. And honestly, a few hours ago, I got super excited because I just heard that we've received one of the first images of the area uh, near the supermassive black hole at the center of the galaxy. And um, the scientists released the images of what they've discovered. So the reason I got excited is because um, for the longest time now, we've been actually waiting for the first ever image of the supermassive black hole. And I actually thought the news is coming from the famous Event Horizon Telescope. The telescope that uh, for about two years now has actually been analyzing the data uh, collected from several um, dozens of telescopes around the world in order for us to actually get the first ever image of the black hole. But turns out it wasn't really coming from that particular team, so it kind of made me a little bit sad. But nevertheless, though, we actually now have a much better picture of what's happening in the middle of our galaxy, where the supermassive black hole is. And the image we've received um, has actually uh, been the most accurate and also the highest resolution of all of the images we have so far. Now, let me actually tell you uh, what we've seen. But before that, let me tell you a little bit about what we've predicted to see. So uh, back in the 70s, an astrophysicist by the name uh, Jean-Pierre Luminet predicted um, that uh, the black holes, uh, at least uh, massive black holes that have an accretion disk, would look something like this. Now, this was actually done way, way before any computer simulations. It was actually done um, practically by hand, although he did use a very interesting technique for this. He used an IBM punch card um, from 1960s that was able to actually create this beautiful image um, based on the mathematics that he had uh, himself created. Now, obviously, today we have much better simulations. As a matter of fact, one of the more recent uh, black holes and probably the most famous ones is from the movie Interstellar. The black hole that forms pretty much the center of the movie um, is very, very impressive, extremely, extremely beautiful. But according to uh, Luminen, and also according to the scientist who essentially created this for the movie, Kip Thorne, um, this is not really the most realistic black hole in the world. As a matter of fact, it is very simplified and very simplistic. Here is actually a much, much more accurate representation of what a uh, supermassive black hole might look like. And as you can see, what's important to notice here is that, uh, let me actually just remove the camera for a second, it's not symmetrical. It has different uh, sides that are actually um, different in luminosity. As a matter of fact, this side here is brighter than this side because the actual flow of matter goes this way. And when the matter comes toward you, um, its luminosity is increased because of the Doppler effect. And when the matter moves away from you, the luminosity decreases, as does the actual color. So there's a lot of blue shifting going on on this side and a lot of red shifting going on on the other side. Another good representation is right here showing you how um, unsymmetrical or, or I guess not symmetrical a typical supermassive black hole would be. So this is what we actually expected uh, to see in the center of our own galaxy. And this is what most scientists believe is probably happening there. On the other hand, we also think that the size of the actual supermassive black hole, or at least the size of radiation around it, would also be very large. And so it really surprised many scientists when the results that were just released um, from a paper that you can find in the description below, um, that that's really not what we saw at all. So um, the actual paper is not super easy and there's actually a lot of a lot of um, descriptions and explanations here that don't really show you any actual photos of the black hole. But the results, in essence, show us this. Now, ignore the actual rings here that's uh, drawn by a person. Um, what this shows you is the radiation um, that was recreated in... Um, low radio wave frequency, specifically 86 megahertz, um, in the center of our, of our galaxy. Now, it's sort of similar to what we expected, but there are two major differences. First difference is that we thought this would be much, much bigger. We thought that this is going to be huge. It's much smaller. It's actually way smaller than we expected. On the other hand, we, uh, like I previously showed you, expected this to be asymmetrical part of it being bigger, the other part being smaller. And that's also not what we see at all. As a matter of fact, this is very, very symmetrical and very unusually so. 
And for this reason, this will create a lot of debates in the future. This will probably create new theories, new um, speculations. But what a lot of scientists think now is maybe this can be explained in two different ways. First way, let me actually show you using the actual black hole, is that somehow the radiation is actually coming straight from the disk itself. But the disk um, is somehow not really spinning um, in the way where we would see the actual red, red shifting and blue shifting. Um, in other words, it's basically either almost completely uh, still and the matter just basically falls in directly releasing the energy symmetrically. But that would make our own supermassive black hole extremely rare and sort of not easily explainable. It's probably not really a good explanation. The other explanation, which is also not super good, is that we're actually staring at our black hole right from this angle here, basically from the top. And what we're seeing is, um, well, we're seeing the actual jet. And that would be a pretty good explanation for why it's so symmetrical, but the chance of that happening, the chance of us staring directly at the jet is also very minimal. And if we're staring at the jet, that actually means that there could be some serious repercussions. As a matter of fact, the fact that our actual um, solar system moves around the galaxy um, also means that we're not always going to be staring directly at the jet unless it's literally following us. And that's also very unlikely. So um, in that sense, uh, we don't really know what's happening there. And we have definitely no idea why the images that we've received so far don't look like this, but instead look like this. Um, at the same time, uh, this is still not really the best, uh, most accurate study yet, because the event horizon will most likely beat all of this as soon as we get the results. But I guess not just yet. Uh, also, a little bit more about this particular study. Well, first of all, these are actually the telescopes that participated here. And um, as you can see, they basically connected um, together into this huge mega telescope, virtual mega telescope, that was approximately 8,000 uh, miles or about 12,000 kilometers in diameter. And um, this obviously took a lot of data analysis. It took something like million uh, gigabytes of data of analysis. Um, and the biggest problem with this analysis was that uh, the scientists actually had to find a way to disregard the um, interstellar scattering, basically the uh, effects of different stars, because they usually blur the data and also uh, make the data very difficult to read. And uh, once they found a technique to prevent uh, the stars from interfering and um, basically prevent any kind of interstellar uh, scattering, uh, they were able to actually create several relatively accurate images that you see right here um, that were uh, relatively easy to analyze. And in some of the future studies, um, they're actually planning to do another observation um, at a higher frequency and hopefully even see the shadow of the black hole as well. But I guess our biggest hope right now is that we're actually going to hear back from the Event Horizon Telescope sometime soon. Understandably, it does take a long, long time to analyze all of this data, and there's probably tons and tons of problems that they have to deal with because of the amount of actual data points that were collected. And the fact that so many people that are working on this basically don't even live in the same countries and don't speak the same languages make this slightly more difficult and slightly harder to, uh, to deal with. But nevertheless, though, we're going to patiently wait for the actual first ever image of the black hole. But for now, um, well, we now have a slightly better understanding of what's happening um, at the center of our galaxy. And it's really not what we thought. As a matter of fact, um, it's kind of very interesting and somewhat mind blowing because we really thought we understood black holes, at least mathematically. But this image right here um, looks pretty much nothing like what we predicted. And for this reason, um, we might need to sit down and think about it once again. And anyway, on that note, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. Unfortunately, maybe not the best news we could have had about the actual image of the supermassive black hole. But honestly, um, the fact that we discovered a new mystery makes this somewhat more interesting, actually. So let's wait and see uh, on what's really happening here, because if we're literally staring at the jet of our supermassive black hole, that actually is somewhat concerning. 
Anyway, thank you so much for watching, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and make sure to subscribe if you still haven't, because we're going to come back and talk about this in a few more months, because hopefully by then the Event Horizon Telescope will finally release that picture we've been waiting for. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye. And thank you so much to all of you that support me on Patreon, and thank you for all of your support, it helps me tremendously, and if you'd like to support this channel on Patreon, check out the link in the description and also somewhere right here on the screen. Anyway, space out, see you tomorrow.